Hello students, in today's world we are utilizing most sophisticated and costly aircrafts. These aircrafts are the future of the aviation industry. At the same time, the aviation industry's stake is just related to the safety. If the aircrafts are safe, if aircrafts are well equipped, it means that the passengers who are traveling through these aircrafts would be satisfied. So the protection of the passengers, it's very important to make the aircraft safe as much as possible. For this purpose, aircraft manufacturers every day move forward to make some kind of advancement to achieve the goal of safety. Students, every day we feel that in aviation industry, for the purpose to achieve the safety, analysis is very important. It means that if we are having accidents, if we are having incidents, or if we are facing some problems, technical problems related to the aircraft, it means that we need to have an analysis about these features. For the purpose of analysis, we have employed one of the system which we would study today. Students, that system is called as the flight data and cockpit voice recorders. Earlier, these flight data cockpit voice recorder were called as the black box. Sequence of, of our lecture would be like this. We would study about the flight data recorder, cockpit voice recorder, and the combination of both is called flight data cockpit voice recorder. Dear students, if aircraft is being crashed into the deep sea, for the purpose of location of that aircraft's FDCVR or flight data recorder or cockpit voice recorder, we have employed underwater locator beacon. We would study about that as well. At the end, we would have a conclusion. So we were moving forward. In early ages, people call that flight data recorder or the cockpit voice recorder as a black box. So what is an aircraft black box? An aircraft black box is a flight recorder used to record specific aircraft performances parameters such as acceleration, altitude, attitude, engine performances, etc. Moreover, it is also used to track any ambient noises in the cockpit. Rather than the noises, it also records the pilot and the co-pilot voices or the communication with the ground or the other aircrafts. So, we have employed into the black box two types of data, two types of systems. One is called the fly data recorder and the other is called cockpit voice recorder. Here in this example, we are having a, an aircraft and in this aircraft, we are, we can see a different equipment related to the cockpit voice recorder. Look into the this side. Here, we are having flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder into the rate of, into the root of the vertical tail. Why we are installing the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder into the vertical tail? It's because that this is the most safest place in an accident. If an accident occurs, it means that it would serve as the most safest place for the recovery of the data from the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. Another thing which is important is the Fly data acquisition unit. This fly data acquisition unit serve as an acquisition unit which receives data from different aircraft systems like engine speeds, wing flap positions, aileron positions, rudder position, and the landing gear position. These all positions are being transmitted to the fly data acquisition unit, and fly data data acquisition unit transmit this data. To the flight data recorder. After seeing that where the system is located, we should have another option that how the data is being uh, shown or recorded into the cockpit. So, cockpit voice recorder is utilized by by employing this type of control unit, which this control unit provides information flight data recorder. If we want to test our system. We will press, press and hold this button for five seconds. It will test the system and provides accurate information regarding the 
health of the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. On this side, if you want to erase the data on our choice, we could erase the data by pressing this button. And here we can insert an headset to see what has been recorded. Move forward. How the flight data recorder look like? Dear students, in this example, the location of black boxes means the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder is located in the root of the vertical tail and the flight data recorder look like this. In the flight data recorder, the crash survival memory unit which is the actual memory unit which records the data is in this form. Here we are having the underwater locating location beacon which transmit if the aircraft is being uh, crashed into a deep sea. So this uh, underwater location beacon transmits from the depth of the sea so that the rescue uh, rescue can be done rescue operation can be done to achieve to reach on the spot. Moving forward, here is a complete exam a complete picture of the cockpit voice recorder flight data recorder. One by one, we will discuss something about. We are having a chassis. This is the chassis of the flight data recorder and power supply unit. The power supply unit is here. This is the power supply access cover and the power supply unit. And uh, this is the beacon, water locator beacon. This is the CSMU. CSMU provides the access to the uh, access for the memory recording. It means that the memory card is inserted in this CSMU. Means to say, like just like the mobile memory card, which uh, which uh, records different data regarding the mobile phone. So aircraft data, flight data is being recorded in the CSMU that, that is called as the crash survival memory unit. At the same time, we should have such kind of flight data recorder or the cockpit wise recorder, which should have capacity or capability to survive different difficult situations. For this purpose, this CSMU or the CVR or FTR is being tested for different tests. These tests are very important. For example, the black box unit model in the markets have passed a series of extreme tests designed to simulate a real life crash situation. In all the control situations, the crash survival memory unit must survive with the flash memory inside intact. It means that if aircraft crashes and it crashes into the worst of the worst conditions, that CSMU should be survived. Why the CSMU to be survived? Because the analysis with analysis for the crash has to be are done on the basis of the data which we receive from this CSMU. So the survival of CSMU is very important. So 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 making certification of this CVR oblique FTR, we need to certify that CVR oblique FTR which passes these different tests. These tests are like this. First test is crash impact. The unit is fired from an air cannon to an aluminum aluminium honeycomb target to create an impact of 3400 its own weight. Second test is the static crash. For 5 minutes, 226 kilograms per square inch of force crush each of the unit's 6 major access points. But in this test, the CSM user should survive. The second test for third test is the fire test. In this test, the unit is placed between the three propane burners to be exposed to a temperature of 1100 degrees Celsius for one hour. Means to say that if we provide 1100 degrees Celsius for one hour to this flight data recorder, the CSMU should survive. If the deep sea sub submersion is one of, one of another test, which is being opted on this uh, flight data recorder. In this test, the CSQMU is placed into a pressurized tank of salt water for 24 hours. 
and after 24 hours when you remove the CSMU this should be in a good condition so that the data could be retrieved from the this CSMU salt water submission submersion the CSMU must survive in an salt water in a salt water tank for 30 days if this CSMU or the flight data recorder has been submerged into a, a salt water for the 30 days that data the data placed in the CSMU should be uh, should be accurate one in the fluid immersion you know well that an aircraft we are having different fluids like hydraulic lubricants and many other lubricant uh, lubricant uh, lubricants and the fuel uh, fuel related lubricants the CSMU should survive in the in these fluids immersion as well various CSMU components are placed into a variety of aviation fluids including jet fuel lubricants and fire extinguisher chemicals so the chemical action of these lubricants should not damage the CSMU pin drop test is very important as well in this we drop a 227 kg of weight having a pin that pin should be of a 3 meter uh, should be of a, of a 6 mm steel pin and the 227 kg of weight should be dropped from the 3 meter height and in this case the CSMU should survive so this was all about the CSMU and the CSMU survival test I hope you you have learned something about something from this test and it, these tests are very important for the survival of the CSMU at the end we will discuss something about uh, those which we have uh, read today which we have learned today Dear students, flight data recorder is one of the most important uh, feature of the air today's modern aircraft. In the flight data recorder, we record different parameters, almost um, 84 to 100 parameters. The uh, system can record up to 25 hours of data. And flight data recorder receives different data from the aircraft systems through flight data acquisition unit. Again, coming to the cockpit voice recorder, the cockpit voice recorder is another important feature of the flight data uh, cockpit uh, CV and um, cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder. In this, four channels of cockpit has been recorded two are from the pilot and the co pilot, and two others are mics inserted into the cockpit. These uh, can able to record the four hours of uh, voice recording into the into the CSMU flight data and oblique CVR cockpit voice recorder if both uh, flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorders are in the same on the one chassis that would be called is the flight data cockpit voice recorder and the flight data oblique cockpit voice recorder is having one of the important utility which, uh, which provides the lo exact location of the aircraft uh, fire data recorder if that aircraft is being crashed into the deep sea that is called the underwater locator underwater locator beacon so that underwater locator beacon transmit and at the frequency rate of 37.5 hertz so uh, with this thank you very much i hope you have liked uh, you would like this lecture and uh, don't forget to like and share this video and uh, subscribing our channel. Thank you very much.